Really this oh, is yeah. beautiful. This building is gorgeous. <gasps> I know this barn. I love oh this barn. Oh my god. We should, we're gonna show you our trees in the cooler really quick. Okay. These are all the trees that we're gonna plant at oh our new god. place. Oh my god. Yeah, can we get, I don't know if we can get that footage, it's but it's stuffed full. <laughs> yeah. That so is we crazy. dug them up and they're in these like plastic crates and there's some dirt and like mulch in is there. Is it possible to bring one of them out or are they all in like big, big, big bags? They're all in like oh, okay. yeah. big. Oh my god, it smells like apples and cedar and <laughs> all good things, doesn't it? <laughs> So yeah, we're excited. That's our new farm in that cooler. <laughs> it was an army cooler and we got it for $300. And it just, it's amazing. It's our yeah. cooler. That's insane. Yeah. So these are, um, these are peach trees. You see the buds are swelling quite a bit already. Yeah. This is the first year in several that the blossoms haven't been killed over the winter. So yeah. there's actually a potential to get peaches this year. And is this the same kind of uh, style that you're talking about of pruning or is this different? This is, is unique to peaches and apricots. Okay. That people do this. It's like this is like V or U. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, the, and the idea, every, every kind of fruit tree has a different like apples make the flower blossom, blossoms on two or three or four year old wood. Yeah. And peaches make it just on one year wood. So you keep on clipping. So, so you want it, the idea, and these are not well pruned, but the idea is to keep these, like like this would be where the fruit would be this year. Yeah. And then you'd cut it back and it would make another one for the fruit next year. Right. And these two, they're called scaffolds when there's like a big permanent branch. And those remain, and the rest of it is like a stick. So it's almost like double the apple yeah, system right. that we'll so see. So it would argue if like you had another one grow, it would come out here, and then these would not have peaches on it. Then. Like what's starting to happen yeah. here is like down here. It's not too bad, but yeah. down here, this you know, this probably should have been cut back to this little yeah. thing or something. We didn't prune yeah. these at all last year. Yeah. We just didn't have time. Peaches you, you can't prune now because they'll get canker. Because they'll get yeah. There's diseases that will invade them. These are pears. <laughs> and they're pretty unruly. This is this is <laughs> totally crazy experiment. One training system, another training system, keep yeah. changing it around. Pairs up there are more organized. Yeah, these are. These they are still make pairs though. And this it's, is more like the espalier type of style, it, it, or but um, that's a how morph? I describe it. An yeah. Espalier <laughs> type he was of gonna style. make it like a big, like an open center tree, but the yeah. trees were drooping, so we turned a tree that was going to be open center into. We put the, up the trellis and yeah. flattened them out. And flattened was, them out. It's not that elegant of a process. It's not. These are blueberries. Nice. We've got like three more acres of little blueberries up in the big field. This is a row of like mostly wine grapes here that we don't really use. Yeah. But it's. <laughs> Just for posterity's sake. And now we're into apples. <laughs> and these are the apples that we planted the most recently. These okay. These are what, three years old now? Uh, I don't the, even know. Yeah, we grafted them, I think. But we haven't pruned them yet this year, um, as you can see. Not pruned yet this year, but not in bad shape. They yeah. don't need all that much. And, um, and now is this considered, this is not an espalier, or is it? This is this is called slender spindle. Slender spindle, okay. So, yeah. the, so explain this one to me, because you were mentioning that this is the one that you primarily do for your apples. We could show you maybe on a bigger like on a bigger tree too, where sure. there's more permanent stuff going on. But, but this, these the are, second one or the first These one? are only three feet apart. Uh-huh. So they're very, very close together, and the trees are, are going to be very simple trees. Um, see, they want to kind of make branches here that become bigger and have sub branches off them. Yeah. But we'll keep them. We're going to keep them all like this. Really, in fact, we'd cut this right here. Yeah. And we would just keep this simple little thing, a weak, small branch. These are the fruit buds. The goal is to get as many of these fruit buds in close to the tree, mm -hmm. so that your your tree is really just kind of like a like a stick with, with short branches like this long coming off from it that don't interfere with the next tree, to have as many apples in tight as you can get. Yeah. It won't ever really get any taller than that, um, but it'll get thicker. And why, why won't it get taller than this? Is it, is it the type of variety that it is, or are dwarf, you keeping it cut? Dwarf fruit stock, making it gr produce fruit early, which will stop growth yeah. and, and cause the tree to kind of go into an, an, a more mature stay when trees are young they want to grow mm -hmm. and, and as they get older they'll make fruit and they put more of their energy into making fruit than mm -hmm. wood so we want to get it in that state as quickly as possible and then hold it there also they're close so there's some root competition right. that keeps them small how do how do these stand up in storms or heavy winds they're fine because well, they have the trellis. trellis right so is, like they're is, if you see that they have these little clips yeah. you know so they're clipped on 
And we do a lot of like rubber band tying of limbs. These don't have too much of it now because we okay. did that when they were younger, but. Th these are all coming off perpendicular and then we had to do that to yeah. them you, with clothespins usually. You can almost see a little light band right there mm -hmm. where we had a clothespin clipped yeah. on when it was very young yeah. to, uh, to redirect the branches. Yeah, we do a lot of training. But these are off okay. to a good, good star. I yeah. feel like we haven't messed anything up on them. They just need to be trimmed back a little bit. There's a good, I really like it when there's a lot of flower buds really close like that. Yeah, you see them, like yeah, that. look at that, that's unbelievable. So, the only place this branch really wants to grow is here, and if we cut it back a bit, mm -hmm. it'll grow again next year like that, but it'll also make fruit there. The fruit yeah. will take a lot of the energy. And these, this should crop like decent this year, actually, even though they're very small trees. And is the idea behind this, especially because you have to, you know, they're so close together, uh, like how, what's the lifespan? Can you get like 10, 30 years out of these or? I mean, they say 25 or so. Okay. Yeah, you know, that's not so bad. Might yeah. be reasonable. Things happen. Yeah. yeah. Even if the top dies for whatever reason, often the rootstock will live and it's, you've got quite a good root system there. Yeah. So you can do what's called top working and graft a new variety onto it. And then it'll, 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 we could maybe show you some Northern spies that that kind of happened to. They kind of died back almost to the ground two yeah. years ago and they're already back almost to full size. And then when you have like the, the graft, mm -hmm. Th that union between the, uh -huh. uh, you don't bury that, right? On a, if you have a dwarf root rootstock, you're not burying that underground, right? That has to stay above ground, where the where the cut is. We don't, but because we don't want it to root, because yeah. then because then the potential is that you could just get the old the tree. variety on its own roots, right. which could be big. Right, exactly. It's in practice, it's not that much of a problem. Okay. But but on some things, you might want the you might want it to root right if you want the extra like root i've got above some the persimmons cut. there that i that i grafted and i would actually love it if the top variety would root yeah. on its own yeah it, there's there's not on a dwarfing rootstock it's just a rootstock just to be able to get the same variety i see okay so you just want more maybe for more stability and stuff if it's for that top one to root or um or why would you want it to root so the two reasons to graft yeah. that, okay same as five more but i can think of like to, to dwarf the tree. Mm -hmm. So there's some attribute to the roots, like the apple rootstocks we use, keep the tree smaller and they make it produce fruit earlier. And they're supposed to change the branch angle to be more horizontal, mm -hmm. like less, less vigorous um, vegetative growth and more fruiting. Mm -hmm. And that's just the character of the roots, whatever hormones the roots have or whatever, that's just the character they give to the tree. Mm -hmm. And then the other reason would be because you can't propagate, you can't clone the, the actual the, variety. The actual variety. So some varieties are a lot easier to clone than others. Some right. things you can just take a cutting and put it like a willow. Yeah. You could just cut a stem and put it in the ground and it'll grow the same tree as yeah. the first one. Yeah. Other things you can't do that. And so the only way to do it is really to graft it onto some roots. And you could get those roots by seedlings. That's what they usually do for peaches. Mm -hmm. They just take peach pits and grow them into little peach trees and they're random. So then you cut them off and you put the variety you want on top. Right, and so if you They have... don't dwarf it. And in that case, it wouldn't hurt if the top tree rooted. Exactly. Because it might actually be stronger if it didn't have to deal with that graft. Right, the... right. But you keep the dwarf rootstock up above the ground so that the top part does not root because then it would potentially root to yeah. the old uh, to a non-dwarf variety, Correct. essentially. Okay. Correct. I'm just posing, you know. I'm yeah, like so good. Yeah, he's I very... so good. He likes me. rubbing his face on things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have our whole orchard mulched, um, which is a big like most people don't do that. Oh no, I would. I'm looking to mulch the shit. I, <laughs> I'm looking to plant a lot of trees this year, and I'm like, I got to mulch the shit out of this. Yeah, room. definitely. Is this a heavy goldenrod area at all, or no? Um, yeah, but what? I mean, it was before we started mowing. Before we started yeah. mowing, yeah, it okay. really easily dies. If you as just soon mow it, it'll turn it. into this. We didn't have to seed grass. Or yeah. Anything. Where are we here? Are we gonna? Okay, so I was kind of partially down this row here, and I actually wasn't doing too many renewal cuts on these because I didn't know what we're doing with oh, okay. orchard. Well, so I, I was like, you know, I wasn't doing. That. Okay, I'll go over on my side here. Too many renewal. Usually, I'm on the downhill side and he's on the uphill side. Oh yeah. Okay. And then we know that like the year before, I was the one who made that cut. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, <laughs> Except... we also yeah we're dealing with our own mistakes, so it's like. <laughs> yep. We don't get angry. We silently are like, why the <laughs> hell did I do that? <laughs> Instead of griping at each other. You little bastard, why'd you yeah. Cut, why'd you leave that? 
<laughs> Except, yeah, anyway, so. And you, and you have around 60 varieties now, you said, yeah. right? Yeah, we do. They're all different. They all have a different growth habit. And this is just, I'm just gonna cut this whole thing because this is like way too low. Uh, let me get those loppers. It's a little bit ridiculous. So, um, let's see. It looks so, like I did Okay, this. so this is like, this is what, 2016, grafted in 2015, planted in 2016. So this will be their fifth, fifth leaf, they call it, the fifth growing season in okay. the ground. These, they've been producing apples for like at least three, maybe four years now. They're enterprise, they're disease resistant, they're very late, they're kind of thick skinned, they make a really good pie, they're really apple flavored, and they're kind of not that great just to eat. So. You, you were for a while there, like, you know, highlighting my like very good partner. Like, you're like, <laughs> makes great apple pie, <laughs> got thick skin. <laughs> so, I'm tall, but not too tall. <laughs> so this is, this tree's kind of like mature. So it's, it's, you can see what we've got. We've got the main trunk and these weak branches. And then what we want is to keep the branches from getting too big and permanent because like this one here, I think I'm going to do something with, because it's, it's Except like I water. already pruned that tree, but what, you did. Yeah. Well, well, how far? Do you, how far? Where? Which way are you going? I was going this way. All right, we'll start the next one. <laughs> I'll leave that. I pruned this tree too. Rule number one: never, never. I don't. Where your did I stop decision. here? <laughs> I, I probably already I took it. off a lot, so that's why I left it. And because you don't want to take you off too much from a tree. I got this one. You got this. He's this like, one looks you? like it has some like sort of weird stuff going on this in one, it. Fire blight or something. This is, yeah, this one has like mushrooms okay. growing out of it. I think this tree is probably gonna die. Okay, well anyway, this is, I can do this here too. So we've got, this, a couple of these branches are really big. And you can see what happened last year. We, I cut one of these really big ones mm -hmm. back. And it, now we have this weaker, like I love this guy. <laughs> we have this weaker growth coming out of this here. And it's more what I wanna see. And it, it's not as vigorous. It's not gonna be competing with the dominance of the leader of the tree. Right and it keeps the tree, the fruiting wood, kind of young. So this here comes all the way out and around. So it's, is And this it is really, this has been raised up to kind of replace its sort of zone. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna, but it's got a bunch of little things here. So I'm gonna go to that and just get rid of that. And I, I like to try to do two. There's some weird like dead stuff like going on here, like here and then that other branch too that you might want to chop back pretty decently far. It's like, well, if yeah, you, like if that you, inside yeah, of this, see, so this, this branch had, is this kind had of... had something. These trees get, but they're still alive. I don't know, they still made a lot of apples. Um, this is a nice way to end. Um, trees have hormones in them and the terminal bud produces hormones that kind of directs the branch on how to grow. And mm -hmm. if it ends in a weak little thing like this, it's pretty horizontal, that's yeah. good. Um, I like that. And then these two here are like in the same spot. So the one on yeah, you top, don't want the the one on top is kind of sickly looking. Yeah, you don't want to crisscross them, that. right? Okay. So now the process from here is basically I could just go one branch at a time for the tree and I'm simplifying and making sure that they're not so big. And these, these would just come out a lot further than I want. So I'm just gonna take each of these. This is kind of growing up. So we're gonna cut it back. The rest of it I can leave. Put that there. This here, it just goes on and on. We really want it to focus back in there. So I might, let me just do it to that. Cut the bigger one of these two out and leave the weekend there. What I'm thinking about is each branch wanting to be its own little zone and not get too complicated and not go off here and there and everywhere. Like this one is kind of like, you can't make up its mind. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna cut to a flower bud there, cut that shorter to a weaker one there. This guy's gonna go up. I'm leaving a little bit cause I'm hoping we'll break a couple buds there and get some of this kind of spur stuff, like this kind of stuff going on. Right, so like this, here, like last year. We yeah. cut this yeah. here. Yep and see, I think probably two years ago. Yeah. And now we're getting these little complicated little sub fruiting structures mm -hmm. that are really compact. I like to see them really compact and close to the tree. Again, leaving the weak end and just kind of, it's called a, what's a heading cut when you do that? Now, if you have an earlier fruiting variety, 
compared to one that's a later fruiting variety in the season, uh -huh. are you pruning the earlier one earlier or can you prune both you know, early in the season. We should have pruned all we of these. They should have all be done. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We should have finished like two weeks ago. We Got finished it. on April 1st last year. Yeah. And everything's totally a little fine. ahead this year. Yeah, everything's a little ahead. Ahead meaning like the, it's warming up. Like and yeah, the buds, buds are breaking. Breaking like early. Yeah. Green. It's time for the, it's time for my first spray actually. I spray um, dormant oil and copper on them at this stage. For fungus? Um, the oil smothers insect larvae and insect eggs. And the copper and the is for, for fungus. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then one of the, another thing we do is like, that one doesn't have any root stocks, but like when they have so, so many root stock suckers, the best thing we shouldn't, that we should have done last year that we didn't right. do is like during the midsummer, come and prune out these root stock suckers because then they won't grow back as much. Now, is this the root stock suckers that are uh, coming up from the uh, dwarf graft or from the non-dwarf graft? Um, or you do, it doesn't matter, you just don't want them. Those are all from the root stock. Okay. Not from the, not from the variety. Right, yeah. but you still don't want them because then it just, it takes the energy and puts it towards them and not the tree. Yeah. Exactly. And it's just, it also makes like, Mulch encourages it, unfortunately. Mulch mm. makes the suckering yep. worse, I think. Yeah. So this is, this one right here, I'm gonna cut right back right to the bottom Woo. to renew it. And there's a kind of a cut you can do that's longer on the bottom than the top. Right. And that increases your likelihood that you'll get a, a latent bud that'll break in the bottom. Oh, nice. When a bud breaks on the bottom of a renewal cut, it, uh, see if we could, See any here? You get this. <laughs> There's one that didn't break anything. <laughs> you get, well, like right, you can or see. Right here. right here. Like you can see, see this bud broke on the bottom. So this is, is really subdued, not nearly as strong as one that like this here. broke mm -hmm. on like the so top side. So like there's side. the bottom one and then there's this giant monster. Yeah. So what, what made you choose this way of growing trees with a high density on a trellis system with uh, focusing on the uh, like weaker branches. It's what they're recommending in terms of like it's the it's, modern way to grow an apple tree. Got it. So <laughs> farming is like it's there's a you really got to be efficient because the you really it's really hard to make money farming and it's actually there's a lot of people like you can lose a lot of money you can actually just do a lot of work and just pay to do it. Right. While growing people's food. That's really common. And so anything you can do to make it more efficient and cost effective means that you're, it's sustainable. Because if you can't, you know, if, you're, if we had planted these trees 25 feet apart and they were standard sized trees and we we're going up on big ladders to pick them and the pruning was just all on ladders and stuff, um, we probably wouldn't even be getting apples off them, something we'd planted in 2016 yet. And so we'd be just taking care of them and not getting any apples at all. Mm -hmm. And then when we did, it would just be so much more labor that we might not be able to make a living doing it. You know, on our new place, it'll be interesting to see how things change because it's all soil dependent too and weather dependent. And right. Yeah, because it's, uh, this topography feels very different than the, you know, the one that you're on now. It's you a know? hill, but not as much of a hill. And yeah. the soil here is really sandy. Um, it was like a beach, basically, a long, long time ago. Do you think you might have to get, um, different root stock that's better for a, a specific kind of soil or is no. that is that a thing uh we are using we're using the root stock on that 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 block of ones that Can were I really just close have that together water. we showed you so yeah there are different root stocks for different soils um apples are pretty adaptable we're really in a it's a good spot to grow apples here yeah You gotta balance the tree. If you cut too much out, the yeah. tree will respond by growing a whole bunch. Right, especially because you're cutting it now, which is the time when it is growing, yeah, right? Yeah, it will so, invigorate it. Yeah. yeah. So like when I do this, it's good to invigorate this and make get a new young, healthy branch coming yeah. in. Two years from now, that'll be making the apples. That, that's why I'm, I'm nervous for us cutting down all this uh, multiflora rose and honeysuckle, because I'm like, 
Cutting means growing. <laughs> you just gotta keep it mowing. Yeah, yeah. Well, you just gotta pull the honeysuckle, and that it really, it really will. I mean, it'll send back some weak shoots here yeah. and there from some roots, but not too bad. Like this renewal cut here, I'm just gonna tie that, tie that down somewhere. When the trees were younger, we did an awful lot of training, and at this point. See, when oh, they were young, we were fighting them growing up. Mm -hmm. And now it's almost like... That's not the best place, but... It's almost works. like we're fighting them going down, you know? So we got to... Horizontal is best. The, the, the hormone oxen will flow by gravity down the branch from the terminal bud. And a, a branch that's growing upright, this terminal bud will produce oxen and it will suppress these buds from growing right into branches they right. might make a leaf but they won't make a branch so if you took this tip and you bent it like that the oxen stays there it mm. like traps it it can't go up over this right so then and these buds will be released and they'll start growing branches i see i see now all these buds now you have all that grow. interest yeah on that same when branch. you when you get a a more um like this here See, there's nothing there. Yeah. It's called blind wood. Yeah. And it, it just wastes our available space. So it would be better if we had pulled that one down. When we grafted these, I went to a, to a friend's orchard and cut budwood. And he, it was a bit of a Franken orchard at that point. He had taken a block of mutsu that his dad, his dad used to be, it's a whole family of orchardists. Mm -hmm. um, his dad had, uh, been working on in the 80s uh, study for vole resistant rootstocks mm -hmm. that you wouldn't need the cages because mm -hmm. the goat voles wouldn't like the taste of them. Interesting. And um, he planted all of them, to, grafted all of them to mutsu and he planted about a five acre block. Actually, it's like, maybe not five acres, maybe three acres. Like about half as much as what you see all fenced in here. Okay. To these mutsu trees that were this big around. <laughs> They weren't really dwarfing the yeah. novel. Yeah. The novel didn't work out. Um, th these giant trees that were like 30 feet tall. I mean, like literally, like almost like these hedgerow trees. Here. Yeah. Huge things. And so James, my friend, uh, got into making cider and he went and he amputated them all just above where the deer could get to about like yay high. Yeah. Chopped them off to like pillars. Oh my God. And he top worked them with other varieties. and. So I had a map, kind of a cruddy map to go by. And uh, this is just not very good. And we went and cut budwood, but unfortunately some of the things that we thought were the varieties were Mutsu. <laughs> so like every 20th tree for stuff we grafted that year. <laughs> There's a Mutsu. There's a Mutsu. <laughs> <laughs> and they're just scattered the throughout. Mutsu's good. Yeah. Mutsu's good. <laughs> they're fine. Mutsu's good. The that is, see. These rubber bands are great. They're great. These are the best things, these like tab bands. And this thing's probably like five, six years old and it's still as good as new. Oh, too. that's great. Cause usually if you just do a regular rubber band, they're done they're in the done, season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've tried regular rubber bands to Doesn't, tie things down. They're good for season. like, they're like like three weeks and yeah. they just, they photodegrade. And do you feel like these also do well? Yeah, like, they're fine. Yeah. I mean, these have been there for five, like you said, we planted these in 2016. So yeah. that thing, that guard has been on there since 2016 and it's totally fine. We made those. It's, Guards are very labor intensive and they can get very expensive if you have a lot of trees. What are you using for the irrigation lines? Um, it's got a, there's two different things. I think this has the integral emitters. I don't know. This one? No, this one doesn't. It has it to the left right there. Yeah, oh, yeah you yeah. see a little micro okay, flapper. Yeah. yeah, we put a micro flapper in. So this is just uh, a kind of soft polyethylene pipe made for this. You, you can actually squeeze it. It's like pretty easy to cut and work with and stretchy. And then those are little things you can buy in a pack of 100 for like 25 bucks. And they emit a gallon an hour, um, supposedly pressure compensated. So as it goes up and over the hill, they all emit the same amount. Sort of works. <laughs> I don't really believe we it. We switched to using this kind that they build them into the hose now. Um, and the pipe is obviously more expensive, but uh, it's a lot less work. The purpose of this is, is just because, for me, it's because I love growing trees and it's like an art project, like a 
a 3D living art installation and it's beautiful and it's private and I don't mind sharing it with friends or whatever, but I don't want it to be a public park. Yeah. I come home from farmer's market on a busy day and this, this place is like, it's like relaxing. I'm like, take it soft. You go for a walk around the orchard oh, and the birds are I can are like be away from people now, yeah. just around the plants. I get along really well with plants. People are a little difficult. Yeah. Like even with our own land, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of thinking like, oh, this stuff is gonna take 30 years for us to do everything that we want on this, you know, so you can It's about the process. Yeah. Yes. If you don't enjoy it's the process and you're waiting for the finished thing, it'll be difficult. But exactly. if you just kind of enjoy growing stuff, yeah. it's great. Yeah, totally.